जय श्री माता जी लेट अस ऑल बाउ डाउन टू श्री माता जी रेज अव मदर कुंडलिनी एंड पुट बंधन श्री गणेश मंत्र Let us now listen to Shrimadhaj's speech. Today we have gathered here to do Sri Ganesha Puja. the first deity that was created by radhi shakti was shri ganesh because it was necessary <coughs> first to <coughs> create the deity of principle
the deity of principle in the sense that whatever is created, whatever is there, as called bhava, whatever has been so far created, up to human level, everything <coughs> had to be through the implanted mechanism of energy. <coughs> Otherwise, nothing could have been treated. If you go into the matter, say sulphur dioxide, then sulphur and oxide go on deep into it till you reach the state when it is a molecule. Then you see these atoms of sulphur and oxygen, they oscillate. They oscillate with a frequency. There are three types of frequencies they use. Now imagine in the molecule, think of it. In the molecule of a substance, there is an energy which is active. Now one may say that why should be in matter there is energy? One can ask a question, why there should be energy in matter? <coughs> If there was no energy in the matter, how can you have all chemical compounds? Who pushes them? Say you have sodium chloride. Sodium and chloride are attached to each other. But if the chloride has to go to some other atom, then who does that? There has to be some energy which is absolutely in, built into matter. Now we may say that what about water? You know water has energy, that's how we have hydrostatics. Even coal, even stones, all of them have got energy within themselves. And it is all controlled by the principle of Sri Ganesha. So though he is such a small, little, tiny little child. How great is his work and how much he has to work out. Now from matter you move, say, to living plants, then to animals, then to human beings, and everywhere his energy works. <coughs> At the level of matter they might call it electromagnetic. But potentially it is the energy of Sri Ganesh, which is electromagnetic at that point. Then it starts evolving, growing. That's how we have different stratas of energies that we see in different growth of the evolution. In the human being, it exists, as you know, as auspiciousness, as purity, mainly the innocence. <clears throat> so the power of innocence 
is such a guiding factor. There's a difference between ignorance and innocence. If you are innocent, then to you nothing is important except for love. For an innocent person who is not conditioned, who is not egoistical, who is not so-called mature, it is the love that it understands. It doesn't care <coughs> for any wealth, any power, anything, but the love that it can feel the pure love of a person. Innocent person has no understanding of gaining anything out of the love he receives or he gives, no sense at all. Innocence is the basis of all the dharmas. If you have no innocence, you cannot follow dharma. Because if you are dharmic, it is maybe a mental attitude, maybe egoistical, maybe because you are born in a religion, uh, because somebody has told you about it, <coughs> It's going to be very superficial. Unless and until it is embedded in the quality of innocence, dharma has no meaning. In that state, you are dharmic. You are beyond any thinking about it, of any deductions about it, but you are dharmic. You cannot be a dharmic. You cannot be. As if <coughs> the manifestation of innocence is morality. Once Sri Ganesha is awakened, I hope he has been awakened in all of you. And if you respect him, just respect him, then automatically <coughs> you develop a sense of morality. I don't have to tell you. I don't have to explain to you. You just become moral. People who have seen you are quite amazed and said that, how is it that their eyes are fixed, so innocent, without any lust and greed? is the light of Sri Ganesha from the back agya, front agya, <coughs> is Jesus Christ who is the manifestation of Sri Ganesha. It is impossible for Western mind to understand that Jesus Christ was purity. They can't understand. And they have criticized him and said horrible things against him. Somehow he is forgiving them. But one thing about Sri Ganesh is that, that he worships his mother. Motherhood is very important. Motherhood in the women, motherhood, in the father, and also in the children, has to be accepted as the mainstay of <coughs> family life and society. <coughs> the ordinary life of a human being, very simple, innocent, simple people. 
revolves <coughs> around the mother. <coughs> it revolves. But the mothers have to be mothers. As Sri Ganesha is so much surrendered to his mother, and who is his mother is Adi Shakti. He does not know anybody else, just knows his mother. This is extremely important <coughs> in Sahaja As we say, there is a moral human beings, there are, they are doing immoral things. Because they are committing sin against the Adi Shakti. Committing sin against Ganesha It may be forgiven, but committing sin against the Adi Shakti. It encompasses a very big <coughs> area where we start seeing how we are committing the sin against the Adi Shakti, which ultimately Sri Ganesha punishes, ultimately. Actually, the Adi Shakti doesn't punish anyone. The date is only punished. First and foremost thing that is to be understood, that innocence <coughs> should be respected. <laughs> looked after, nourished, and protected. <coughs> That's why I'm very particular about the children. Children should not be exposed to the public. We should not try to make photographs out of our children and expose them in the newspaper or give them for advertisement or anything like that. It's a very wrong idea to expose your children. To gain some money out of them. In any way. In the smallest way also. Because we are selling the innocence. The innocence which is invaluable. Writ large on the children. Many children I know who have been advertised and all that, especially in India, have died. Also, we have to look after our children with great care. But we go to two extremes, I've seen. Some people are only worried about their own children. If anything happens to them, just get upset. That means you are respecting your child because he's your child. But if you are respecting him because he carries innocence with him, then you have to respect every child. And understand every child. What they talk, what they say, how they behave. Luckily, you all have got children now who are born realized. It's such a great thing, such a blessing. So on one side, we have to see how innocent they are and how they talk. I'll give you an example. Bhagdan, oh no, this Wolfgang was very serious. <coughs> and his wife told me that we were taking him to the hospital. So his doctor says, why are you taking him to the hospital? There are no surgeries there. How will they correct his chakras? innocently said the correct thing. And they couldn't do, doctors didn't do anything. I had to cure him. 
Take him to mother. Why are you taking him to the hospital? They see the right point and say the right thing because they are innocent and innocence means they have pure attention. Pure attention for anything you need. Say music, for art, for anything you have to have pure attention and that comes through your innocence. Say a person who is an artist and who is very money-oriented, say for example, a person who is uh, doing some paintings and all that. His art cannot become eternal art, cannot. That's why we see in modern times, whatever art is created, it just comes and goes, it has no eternal value. Same with the modern music that they are having. The same thing is happening, it comes and goes, and no one knows where it has disappeared. Behind it is money orientation, and that money orientation results into a kind of a creation which is not perfect. All creations which were dedicated to God in the olden times are being today very much respected and people pay a lot of money for that. Maybe at that time the artist must have suffered. But they understood, innocent artists understood very much that if we have to express, we must truthfully do it, not to please, not to please the people, not to please anyone, but to please God. As you know that Michelangelo had a big fight with this Pope here because he couldn't tolerate nonsense that was coming from the Pope. All the artists always have been fighting, real artists. So this innocence also gives you a power of self-understanding. You know where you stand. A person who is innocent knows very well that he is standing on the pedestal of virtues. He should not give in to all kinds of nonsensical things which are very popular, may be fashionable, may be accepted. For what? For what are we going to sacrifice our innocence? What is our gain? Maybe some people are too brilliant and they may try to show off with their brilliance for a short time, but they don't remain in the eternal history. They go as egotistical people or as very <coughs> dishonest people. Nobody respects them. So there is a big attack on the innocence of people, big attack. First it comes from children. As you see this nonsense that is going on which we hear about, I mean, I can't even understand why they do it. They do it on children, these funny attacks of abusers. It's just because they want to kill the innocence. Perhaps those who do it have no innocence in them, and they don't want the children to have any innocence left in them. Otherwise, in India is something we can't understand, really, we can't understand. But it is becoming much more prevalent, much more fashionable now, because there is definitely an attack on innocence. Not only on children but even on people who are innocent. Because those who have deliberations in criminality, in all kinds of sinful act, will never, never try to protect innocence, never. Because juxtaposition is there. 
they are doing something which they think is the best. I don't know if they think that way, but I don't know what justifies their behavior like this, is to attack the innocence of children. In so many ways you will find this innocence is being attacked. If your children are doing well, if they are studying well, somebody might try to catch hold of them. If some person they find is an innocent person, they will try to put him into trouble. The innocence is sort of, is itself is such a power that it challenges the hatred, the <coughs> abusive nature of people. First of all, we should see that how our conditioning takes over our innocence. It makes you extremely ritualistic. Even in Sahaja Yoga I've seen, I've heard also, that people are extremely, extremely uh, <coughs> ritualistic. Now the ritualism is like this, that you have to say something three times, you say three times, seven times, like tied up people. <laughs> I've seen some Sajogis like that. And some Sajogis, I think they must be Bhutish, get frightened with me. What is there to be frightened of me? Because they are Bhutish, they are getting frightened. <coughs> Otherwise, why should you? I love you all and you won't find more a greater uh, mild guru than myself.
महामंत्रास Thank you, Shumata Ji, for this beautiful meditation. Let us all bow down to Shumata Ji, raise our Mother Kundalini, and put Bandhan.
we will meet again tomorrow morning same time jai shri mata ji Thank <laughs> you.